Okay, well, guys, as you just heard, I am sick. I don't even know if I'm going to put that part in the video, but I'm very sick. Um, yes, I have a tank top on because I'm burning up. Um, it's, like it's the flu, pretty much. That's what I have a feeling. Um, I haven't been to the doctor because I don't want to pay for a doctor. I don't care how much money I've ever made in my life. still don't want to pay for a doctor. So this video is going to be a lot shorter than what it originally was. And I'm basically going to dumb this down and make it very point blank. I'm not going to talk around it. So with that being said, <coughs> let's get into this so I can go eat, take some medicine, and hopefully get to feeling a little bit better. So today, if you're watching pre-market NXTD, and the topic on this video, I guess I should point that out, is the importance of pre-market trading. Um, whether you trade in it or not, um, it's really a big factor in the, my style of day trading. If you follow me or if you're wanting to day trade, um, learning pre-market is a huge thing. And again, I trade off of three things. It's got to be chart, catalyst, and volume. I mean, volume is the biggest thing. Oh. So, that being said... NXTD was the one I watched this morning. It was on my watch list, blah, 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 blah. And the importance of pre-market is, yes, these things can run up. And I've been playing, playing pre-market a lot more in the past, I don't know, month. And there's a reason for it. Um, if you, I've, I've acquired this new style of trading as well. Um, it's not really that new. I've done it before, but I've never really messed with it a ton. So if you find your catalyst or whatever down in here and it pops up and you find this resistance pretty much that it doesn't want to go through and this morning it was that 260 range and then basically on my big account this is what I traded today and once it broke out that 260 pre-market I knew that it this one was going to go a little bit further. Um, so I was in around 262, 263. I believe like 262.5 was my average. Something like that, and I held it until the market opened pretty much, and then got out. I'm sorry about that. Um, that's a good friend he trades too. Um, okay, so pre-market. Um, as you can see, when these markets are down, so we'll go look at spy. Um, as you can see, it's down. Q Q Q Q. Um, it's down. These big things are down. As you can see, this one got some news a few hours ago, and it's been grinding up. And seems to not want to be able to get over this right here. What is that, 275 range? Yeah, makes sense, the bottom of that. So, so, anyways, this is what we're looking at. And as you can see, these things have huge sell-offs or not all of them do, but some of them will get this. They're making these higher lows pretty much, and then all of a sudden they get to this pre-market, and there may be one green candle, and it may hit a high, and then they just tank. And I, you usually have to read into here to figure out why. 921 Wall Street set for rebound aimed earnings to lug Fed speakers. Um, Obviously, that sounds like, well, that was before pre-market. Well, that was during pre-market, so that was like over in here, 921. That was right here. Um, as you can see, that news came out. It took a little bit of a dip and then bounced back up. But there's been multiple of these, and I've been seeing this reoccur. Um, I don't know which stocks right now because I really don't have the energy to spend the time to go back and look at them. But I've been playing... Uh, when they start making pretty much lower highs is usually when this pattern occurs and then they just fall off at the open. That does happen. Don't get me wrong. I've seen that happen. Um, it's a great it's a great pattern to short. And right now shorting may become a big thing with all this being said and the market crashing a little bit. But the market's very volatile and this basically just crashed. But again if you guys can get up early in the morning Go over, look at stocks that are moving right here. Basically, they just pop up, and then you can literally find 
the resistance pretty quickly usually with those stocks that are moving in and they consolidate a little bit and then they just pop through it. Once they pop through it, these stocks usually tend to just start grinding upwards. And as soon as they break trend, so basically what I would do is I'd probably put a trend line here and a trend line here at that lowest point and then extend it to the right. So I'm not holding it through that move because that's way too big of a move. But as long as this is uptrending, I'm okay with this. And then as soon as it makes that big candle, you could still be you could be out and literally just break even at that point. But usually when I see a green candle or a red candle that's that big, um, I'm already out. That's just my way of doing things. Um, do what works for you, of course. But again, playing news does work. I mean, I'd hate to say that it doesn't work because that'd be a lie. Um, but as you can see, it pop came out with some news, and then it popped back up again. So, the moral of the story is, those three things that you really got to focus on, pattern, volatility, and the catalyst of why it's moving, and you should be pretty good. And then remember, your entry is like the biggest point of the trade. Like, you have to be able to get a good entry. <coughs> I thought I was going to get through this without coughing again. I was totally wrong. So with that being said, um, pre-market is pretty much finding resistance is how I trade it on things that are up already moving. They have news or I go to stock tweets and see what the news is. I don't really base, I don't base my trades off of anybody else. That's for sure. Um, I used to do that and that's why I lost. Um, I'm going to do a vlog on that. Hopefully this weekend when I get the feeling better. Hopefully Saturday. But these just trend up and... Sometimes they fall, sometimes they'll run even further. It really depends if they break resistance or not, or break support in this over here. So with that being said, please give this video a thumbs up. Remember the three things that you need to trade, the main things, and I'm going to try to get the feeling better. So I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. If I don't make a video, it's because I've gotten even sicker and I'm laying in bed wanting to die. So I'll see you guys in the next video.